Hello gentlemen and gentle ladies, my name is Sir Stanger, and today we're going to be talking about the Dead Ringer, something that I've been kind of putting off talking about for a while just because of exactly how controversial of a topic it is. Now if you're unaware somehow of what the Dead Ringer is in Team Fortress 2, it's uh... Well, it's this little son of a bitch right here. This Invisal Watch has been the center of quite a bit of controversy pretty much since it was released, and uh, we're going to talk about why that is, all the changes that it's gone through, and, uh, you know, what we can do about this controversy that's surrounding it exactly. Now, the major controversy that surrounds the Dead Ringer is that a lot of people ask the question, is the Dead Ringer a crutch? Now, before we answer that question, what I really want to do is I want to go into the Dead Ringer, talk about what it does, and then I really want to define the word crutch because I think that there's going to be a little bit of confusion as to what exactly I mean by that and I want to make sure that we're all clear and on the same page as to what I mean when I say crutch. So, first off, the Dead Ringer is an unlockable Invisal Watch for the Spy. Unlike other Invisal Watches, the Dead Ringer simply does not cloak you when activated. Instead, it readies itself in anticipation of being triggered. The Dead Ringer is activated while the user is damaged while actively holding the weapon. When this occurs, the Spy will drop a fake body wherever he was shot, giving the effect fact as though he had died exactly where he was standing. His name will also appear in the kill feed of the enemy team showing that he had been killed. Also inactivated, the spy gets 75% damage reduction to whatever damage triggered his dead ringer. Once the dead ringer is triggered, the spy gets 7 seconds of invisibility. For the first 3 seconds, he gains a speed boost and a 65% damage reduction. On top of this, he does not flicker in his cloak whenever he bumps into somebody as you would normally while cloaking. After the initial 3 seconds, the spy then has 4 seconds of normal cloak without the damage reduction and increased speed to try and find a decent place to decloak. This is because once the Dead Ringer has been activated, there is no way to pick up ammo while you are cloaked to try and increase the duration of your current visibility. One other thing to note is that once the Dead Ringer is activated, 50% of your cloak meter will immediately be consumed to activate it, meaning that you will already be down to half of your normal cloak. To top it off, the Dead Ringer has the loudest decloak sound of all of the Invisal Watches, meaning that it's much easier for the enemy to hear where you are when you try and decloak. So as a spy, you will need to find a safer place to decloak than you would with the other invisible watches. And last but not least, the spy must fill up his cloak meter back to full, or 100%, in order to activate the Dead Ringer again. So until he is able to do so, the Dead Ringer is essentially useless. So, we know what the watch does now, but why is it that people seem to be so upset about this watch in particular and think that it's a, a crutch? Well... From what I can tell, the majority of complaints are coming from the fact that it gives the spy a bit too much survivability and allows him to survive in situations he probably shouldn't have. Now I know that there are some other people who believe this watch has other issues that aren't that specific one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and address those just real quick. Using the Dead Ringer to practice with the Ambassador slash play gun spy. For a lot of us, landing headshots with the Ambassador is not an easy task and it takes quite a lot of practice to get used to. You can try using it on, you know, bots on like an empty server or something like that, but nothing really beats playing against live players. This is why the Dead Ringer is a go-to watch for people who are either looking to practice with the Ambassador in a public setting, or are just looking to play good old-fashioned Gun Spy. For this reason, I will say that the Dead Ringer checks out. I feel like using it to play Gun Spy or to practice the Ambassador is a pretty legitimate reason to go for the extra survivability of a Dead Ringer, and I think it's perfectly viable to use in that particular setting, especially since the Spy just really does not have the survivability on his own. He doesn't have very much health, and he's fast, but not all that fast. He's not scout fast, which is the only reason why he's able to survive as long as he does. Oh yeah, and speaking of uh, going fast, the Dead Ringer speed boost. Now, I really couldn't believe this the first time that I, I read it, but apparently some people have a really big problem with the fact that the Dead Ringer gives you a speed boost upon successful Dead Ring. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Dead Ringer did not always have this ability to give you a speed boost after you triggered the Dead Ringer. It was actually added much later as a little bit of a bonus to the Dead Ringer after it had been nerfed for a little while. And personally, I feel like this was a pretty good addition seeing as you were no longer able to pick up ammo packs in order to extend your cloak time. Before, when your Dead Ringer was triggered, you'd be able to walk around and grab whatever ammo packs it is that you find lying around to remain invisible for as long as it is that you need so you can decloak safely. They eventually removed that and instead gave you the ability to run really fast. Now, 
I can only speculate, but I believe that the reason that they added this particular ability was to give the spy an ability to get out of the fight. So when your Dead Ringer was triggered, you could use that to get somewhere that you would not be harmed. And, you know, before you used to be able to do that when you would grab ammo packs and escape in the cloak. Well, you couldn't do that anymore. So they gave you the speed boost instead. So for me, this one checks out A-OK -okay because I feel like it's a perfectly good way to balance out the ability to continue cloaking for a long period of time, and instead, it lets you go farther on a shorter period of cloaking. Okay, so now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and define the word crutch and why it is that it's being applied to the Dead Ringer so often. Now, from what I've seen, the word crutch is used in three different ways when describing a weapon. One, that it makes the class easier to play. Two, it makes bad players better, but good players worse. Three, it allows a bad player to get away with mistakes that he probably should be punished for. Now, for the sake of this video, we're going to go ahead and define a crutch as a weapon that makes a class both easier to play and allows the player to get away with mistakes that would probably be punished otherwise. I chose this definition in particular because I feel like it really encapsulates the reason why it is people are kind of frustrated about the Dead Ringer, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit more depth. Now, thanks to TF2Stats.net, we know that 36.77% of players use the normal Invisiwatch and its various reskins. 30.89% of players use the Cloak and Dagger, and 33.94% of players use the Dead Ringer. This contradicts the common misconception that most players seem to use the Dead Ringer. This is a misconception that even I had before actually going in to do the research for this video. That, and I'm actually surprised how many people seem to use the Cloak and Dagger all the time. 30%? Oh, that's like a whole third. These stats help us better understand why players seem to believe that the Dead Ringer is a crutch, inherently, and used by more people, when in fact that it isn't. I believe this is because they're running into Dead Ringer spies that they run into on multiple occasions, because they thought that they killed them already, but actually didn't. We know this has to be at least somewhat true, because according to the stats, only about one third of players use the Dead Ringer all the time. So, the other times... They're running into either Cloak and Dagger or a normal Invisiwatch spies, which there's really no way to tell the difference between the two when you kill them. So this must mean that the Dead Ringer isn't a crutch, right? Not that many people use it as we thought, so it's not a crutch. Well, yes and no. You see, the Dead Ringer is not a crutch, but there are still people that use it like a crutch. You see, the Dead Ringer itself is not inherently a crutch. It really depends on how you're using it. Kind of like how an assault rifle isn't really a crutch, but if you really wanted to make it one, you probably could. The Dead Ringer has lots of very legitimate uses, things that are really unique to its playstyle, such as trying to get through a really tight choke point to get behind the enemy team. Something that a normal Invisiwatch spy might struggle to do with since there's going to be so much spam coming through that choke. When a good spy uses the Dead Ringer, most of the time they use it to try and get a really convincing death to really make the enemy team feel as though they had actually perished from their damage. They will try to be convincing and make the enemy team feel as though they're safe from the imminent threat of a spy, when in reality they've never been in more danger. Bad spies, however, will whip it out any time that they feel they're about to take damage, and really any time that they're about to make a mistake. It really infuriates a player when you're about to kill a spy because they totally deserve it and they still get away because their Dead Ringer charged up in time. If you're playing Pyro and a spy tries to backstab you while you're in front of a sentry and he still gets away because of his Dead Ringer, then he's definitely using it as a crutch. So for new players, this forgiving playstyle really does lend to the playing the spy, and it really does make it feel easier to play the spy. But they're not exactly doing their job at playing spy either. They're just being extremely agitating to players who know what they're doing. And herein lies the biggest problem with the Dead Ringer. While the concept of the Dead Ringer is extremely cool, and the watch itself has a lot of really good uses, when it comes to actually teaching a player how to play Spy, it's probably the worst Invisiwatch you could possibly pick. Let me go ahead and just say that again for everyone at home that wasn't listening. <coughs> if you suck at Spy, don't use the Dead Ringer. The Dead Ringer teaches awful habits to new spies, and if you don't already know what you're doing when you're playing Spy, you're not going to learn how to do it through the Dead Ringer. Since you can't cloak whenever you want with the Dead Ringer, it teaches you to try and use your disguise kit to get around inside the enemy team and to try and not be noticed. While this can work some of the time, 99% of the time, any sort of player who's been playing TF2 for any length of time will recognize you as a spy. If you're really good at disguising yourself and really good at pretending to be someone on the enemy team, that might buy you a couple more seconds, but 
even then, a good player is always going to spot you. This is where the crutch part of the Dead Ringer comes in. Players who learn how to play with the Dead Ringer inherently think that their disguises are not going to fool people, and or that's the only way that they can fool people, and it usually doesn't work. So they have to use their Dead Ringer as a way to get out, as kind of a get out of jail free card as it's commonly described. This is why most spies who practice usually with the Dead Ringer don't really know how to be stealthy. They just kind of go into the action, see how many people they can kill, and then get out of the fight for free because of the Dead Ringer, even if they mess up. And because they're not dying when they mess up, these spies usually never learn their lesson. So they usually don't get any better than when they currently are, and so we usually see these spies being very bad, which is why this watch is referred to as a crutch, because it's usually seen used like this with bad spies, because a really good Dead Ringer spy is less of an annoyance and more of a nightmare. You don't want to be fighting a good Dead Ringer spy, because they'll have played with the Invisal Watch just about as much as they have with the Dead Ringer, and they'll know how to both be stealthy and impossible to kill. And I can already hear you typing in the comments, Uh, but, but Sir Stanger, I use the Dead Ringer all the time, and I always top score, and I've only been playing TF2 for about an hour and a half. And I'm telling you, that doesn't matter. Even if you've done well playing Spy like this, you're not learning how to play Spy the correct way, and it's not going to take you very far. Especially when you're denying yourself the opportunity to learn anything about the game and improve your game sense by simply hitting right click and getting out of any bad fight you don't want to be in. You're not learning anything this way. Your timing is never going to improve. Your game sense is never going to improve. Your positioning is never going to improve. All of these things are never going to improve because they're all simply being made up for by the fact that you don't have to deal with them with the Dead Ringer. So if you find yourself using the Dead Ringer the majority of the time, I would suggest trying to switch to other Invisal Watches a bit more often to try and diversify your playstyle. In theory, this should remedy the fact that you've probably picked up a lot of really bad habits while playing with the DR for the majority of the time. And in fact, a while ago, I made a video about some training loadouts you can use to help yourself improve at Spy. Anyone who's been struggling with this Dead Ringer problem for a while will probably find a lot of help in the first loadout that I mentioned in the video. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to that down in the description. I highly recommend you go check it out if that's the case for you. Anyway, you guys, this has been my opinion on the Dead Ringer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know what you guys think of it down in the description. I'm highly anxious to know what you guys think about the Dead Ringer. Do you think it's a crutch? Do you think my argument makes sense? Do you think that I'm just full of shit and that the Dead Ringer is probably the best Invisiwatch? I really want to know your guys' opinion, so please let me know down in the description. Also, before I go, I just wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you to my good friend Hex. He animated my new intro that I'm going to be using in all of my new videos. Uh, please let me know what you guys think of the new intro down in the comments. I'd also be very curious to know what you guys think of that. Uh, but go check out Hex's channel. I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description. He does excellent work, as you can see here. And uh, he definitely deserves more attention than he gets. So please, you know, go give him a look. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And with that, let's keep the internet classy. I'll see you then. Hello, my name is my name is my name is Sir Stanger. Hello, my name is my name is my name is Sir Stanger. Hello, my name is my name is Excuse me. My name is Sir Stanger. Hello, can I have the attention of the internet? My name is for one second. My name is Sir Stanger.